Hey guys, a bit of an update here. So this video, we're going to do another load test of this battery. We're going to do it at a, a, a little bit over 0.5 C, so 55 amps, I believe. And the way I'm going to achieve that is through one of these guys. And this is just a resistive load. It's a water heater rod. This is rated for 12 volts, 600 watts. Ends up pulling about 680 watts according to the shunt. And I just have it sitting here in water. Ideally I'd have something circulating the water. <laughs> what I've noticed is that the <clears throat> top of the water gets warm and the bottom of the bucket stays cold. So I'll have to probably come in here and stir it up a little bit every so often or something. I'm not sure how hot this is going to get over the course of about two hours because that's about how long this test is going to run for. So on this <clears throat> phone here, I'm going to have the Victron shunt, the, the Victron app running here so we can show what its shunt is showing. We're going to also watch what the chargery is showing. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a physical update real quick here too before we get into this. I just finished up charging the battery. You can see that we're at about 12 millivolts, 15 millivolts of difference. And this was, it's still a little bit warm, so this was doing some balancing because I had just finished charging the battery and the I was a little bit over 12 millivolts of difference between the cells, so it's it's you know just about done balancing. But I wanted to talk about a, a, a modification to these SOK batteries that I have made based on a couple of things. I've read about I've read about using studs instead of nuts or, or rather bolts. So instead of using bolts, I'm using studs and nuts, and that's what I have installed in the battery here. So this this would be the the stud. We've got an Allen key head in here, so this goes into the into the battery, and then you can hold this in place, you know, put it all the way down and then maybe back it out a quarter of a turn, hold this in place with an Allen wrench and, and tighten the nut down over it. And that guarantees that you have locked in all of that you're using all of the threads in the battery. Whereas the bolt doesn't necessarily get you that. And if you do manage to get that, you, that means you have different size bolts depending on what you have connected to the battery. And that's really irritating. Uh, and, uh, I, I just think uh, causes more problems than it's worth, especially if you're assembling and disassembling batteries, and if you just want to have the best conditions possible for the battery. Now, the, now the reason I have become married to this idea is because I did destroy the threads on 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 this battery, and fortunately, through the use of the studs, I've been able to. I didn't have to tap and drill these holes. I was going to do that with some Healy coil. And so what you do is you drill out the you drill out the hole to something a little bit bigger than M6. You put the Healy coil in place. This gives you a nice stainless steel M6 thread to go into and that repairs the thread. And I thought I was gonna have to do that. It doesn't look like I'm gonna have to. I did manage to get all the studs to go all the way in. It was very difficult. I had to kind of force them in. And I had been forcing the bolts uh, in and out. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, so here's one. So this is one of the longer bolts that SOK uses for um, uh, for the uh, for the positive or negative terminal because there's they have three lugs connected to it and so they needed a longer bolt. But what you can see here, perhaps on camera, the tip of this bolt is covered in aluminum. I I I ripped aluminum out of the th of the studs and I did that at least to, to at least two different studs, if not I think or not studs, but to terminals, two or three different terminals on that battery, uh, and I really created a mess. It was not possible to hand tighten <clears throat> these bolts in. Even on this battery, you know, all I did was remove the old boat bolts, and then I tried to hand tighten them, and I couldn't uh, hand tighten them. Um, so even just putting in the, the bolt, uh, you know, in once, the way they're the way they're doing it isn't going deep enough. It's over torqued. You know, whatever the, the whatever the case is, you should always be able to hand tighten the the bolt or in this case the stud all the way down if not then that means the threads have been warped or damaged or some such so 
um, what I had noticed is under my 0.5c load here, what I was what I was setting up for, I ran it off camera for a little bit, and I noticed I had a hot spot over here, and that my inter intracell voltage difference was reading up to 80 millivolts of difference, and so I came back over here and I started screwing this down tighter, and this you know this went down to 50 millivolts of difference, and then. This kind of almost popped and started moving more easily than it originally was. I'm like, oh, oh no, you know, I'm, I gotta, uh, I'm stripping the threads out. So I had to abort the whole test. And when I took a look at things, um, I, there was just a mess on top of the uh, terminals that actually, you know, I, I had sort of erupted some of the aluminum out. And so that deformed the top of this. So I had to come in here and I had to file it down with a filer. And then that's not even going to create a very good electrical connection. So I I have this 1000 grit, you know, like emery board style sandpaper, which I used after that to get a, get it really nice and flat on here. And then I treated it with um, some of this deoxidizer to really clean them up and put all the, put, uh, you know, I managed to get the studs in. That wasn't easy <laughs> without without drilling and tapping, but I did get them all the way in and I put the nuts in and I torqued it down to seven newton meters and uh, even under 0.55 C of load, I was now only seeing um, maybe a difference of one to two millivolts of, uh, you know, voltage difference, you know, resting versus discharging and everything remained cold. So, you know, resting it was like seven millivolts and under discharge it was like eight millivolts so I knew I had a really good connection so anyway that is the uh, the test setup that we're gonna see now so I'm gonna I'm gonna get that going and we're gonna watch this discharge and I'm mostly looking to to see okay are we holding 100 amp hours under half of a C of load and I'm also kind of putting the chargery uh, under some some test here, I wanted to I wanted to learn more about it and, and just see the differences between the Victron shunt and the chargery. There's a there's some a fair amount of conversation on the forums about the chargery not having enough resolution on the shunt, and so it tends to show you the the incorrect state of charge. I'm not sure what the resolution of the Victron is, and it might not apply here because I'm running a 0.5 C load. It only really comes into play in a major way if you're un drawing less than one amp from uh, from the system. But anyway, let's get this test rolling. One other quick note I forgot to mention here. Uh, I am testing out, and I'm probably going to use Loctite, probably Loctite Blue. That should give me a strong enough hold on the studs themselves so that I uh, don't necessarily have to hold them, hold the studs into place when I screw them in, but also just to give me more, um, you know, just a safer setup. You can possibly see that the stud here, you know, this moves around a little bit. So, because I've backed all of these out a quarter turn, so this is kind of loose inside. So I kind of, I want to lock this down because if I do turn this bolt, this nut without holding this down, then this, this will spin and I don't want to bottom out <clears throat> the connection here. And it also means that if this isn't held tightly in place, I will, I will tighten this down with a, with a wrench to start, but I want to come back and tighten this down with, with, a, with a torque wrench um, to seven, maybe six newton meters. I think, I think these are rated for uh, six and, well, the, the EVE cells that I'm buying, the 280 amp hour cells are rated for uh, six and a half newton meters of force. I, I'm not sure if the spec sheet, I'll have to go look, um, talks about what's needed for this but it's it's since it's the same hole and it's aluminum then it's most likely also six and a half newton meters so anyway all right now on to the test okay we've got the victron shunt here we've got the chargery here contactor is turned off so i'm going to turn that on and we're seeing 54 amps here 55, 55 amps here, and this guy is, I don't know if you're going to see that on camera, you can kind of see the the light bending from the heat <laughs> in the water, but anyway, we're now discharging at 
Let's see, here we got 700 watts. This will probably go down to about 680 watts or so. But let's put this into a time lapse mode and we're going to let this run until the charger cuts it off at 2.5 volts per cell, so somewhere around 10 volts. So you'll notice there's a difference between these two readouts. It's almost like the Victron is accurate with amp hours and the charger is accurate with watt hours. We're approaching the shutdown voltage here pretty quick. The current is falling because the voltage is falling and this is just a resistive load. I don't know why the Victron state of charge was off by about 10%. I'll look at the settings when this is done. Make sure I have the battery set correctly. The battery configuration. So there's 100 amp hours. Voltage is at 10.3. Now that's under pretty heavy load. So the chargery, we've got one cell. Here it goes. It's about to shut down. There it goes. So the charger disconnected the, you can see the DCC status light over here is off. Once this, once one of the cells reaches 2.6, you can see it turned to the, it turned the, it turned the uh, DCC back on. So it'll just kind of cycle back and forth like this, turning the power on and off. So we've got about 150 millivolts of difference between the cells now. So we'll, sh we'll shut the... We'll shut the DCC off and we're complete with this test. So we'll get, uh, we'll get this charged up. I had to put ice uh, in the bucket a couple of times. It, it approached 150 degrees. So I dumped a bunch of ice in there and got down to 110 and it got back up to 140. <laughs> so I'm going to need a bigger bucket. This is only 600 watts. Um, my, I have two more elements. I have a 24 volt 900 watt element here. And when I do have finally a 48 volt battery bank, I've got a 1500 watt element here and this would definitely get way too hot for that bucket of water so anyway we'll get this charged up let me know if you have any questions